Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at two very long-range potential snowstorms. There's not a lot going on in the short to medium range, I'm not going to lie, so we are taking a look at a lower confidence, longer range outlook today. So take this one with a major grain of salt, as the chance of this actually panning out is a little bit lower than typical. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family and social media. I'd also highly recommend that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. And then also our very awesome channel membership that is next to that subscribe button. Now, for today's comment of the day, it's very simple. Do you think that we will have more snowstorms or do you think that we're pretty much done and we're just going to transition straight to spring? I think there's an, a good chance of either. So I'm curious what you guys will have to say. I'll pick one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video and I don't want to bore you with this stuff, but we're taking a look at the upper air real quick. This isn't the most exciting part of what for most people but as you can see if you're taking a look at those blues and uh, greens and yellows that's actually where our jet streams are so our northern jet is that one that goes way up into Canada and then dives down into the eastern United States and then that southern jet which usually brings most of the moisture goes straight through the southern states like Texas Louisiana and then down through Florida these aren't connected right now and that's why we're not seeing any snowstorms but as I move this on all the way to 200 hours out on Friday, March 12th, so we're very far from this, you can see there's only one very strong jet, and this is why we could see some snowstorms coming up. This is like the causation behind it all. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move on and just take a look at some simulated radar from our European model and our GFS model in just a moment. Now, I just want to reiterate this so there is no confusion. There is a very solid chance that none of this stuff happens. That's how long range we're taking a look at. And you're probably wondering, why are you even making this video then? Why would you talk about it? There's nothing else going on. So at this point, I'm just talking about some longer range, lower confidence stuff. And I know that some of you still appreciate the videos regardless of, of what the possibilities are, as long as I'm transparent about what the possibilities are of a certain thing happening. With that being said, we can see there is some snowfall for the Northern Rockies by hours 141. That's not too long range. I wouldn't be surprised if this stuff is really panning out. I mean, we're only about you know, five days away from this point or so. So this isn't too bad. Tuesday afternoon, March 9th, uh, I'm sure there's a great possibility that we do see a setup similar to this. Uh, but we're moving towards Wednesday, March 10th now, so about six days away. That's where you start to get towards the longer range uh, in, in my books, and that's when the accuracy begins to drop off of these models. We do see some snowfall going on for California, Nevada, Colorado, Montana. Uh, but we do see that low pressure center there for the upper Midwest of a 997. And that's actually our first potential snowstorm. But our European model does not have that one bringing very much snow at all. When we take a look at, at the GFS in a moment, we're going to see a much more major outlook. So here we are taking a look by time we're reaching about 1 a.m. on Thursday, March 11th. And you can see there is a bit of snowfall there for Minnesota and Wisconsin and upper peninsula of Michigan, but really nothing much. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to move on towards that second of the two snowstorms that we're taking a look at today that are potentially going to happen. And this one actually looks a lot more major as well. All right, so here we are taking a look at about 7 p.m. there on Friday, March 12th. So again, just the very, very long, long range here. But all of these models have this storm. The European actually is the least major at this point, like I mentioned. But the Rockies see a very good snowstorm here uh, with some rain to the south. I am concerned about the flooding because we've already seen a ton of flooding just about, you know, a few weeks ago. Uh, so it's not going to be the best time for more flooding to occur. And then we see some moderate to heavy snowfall going on for Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan there as well. Eventually, this moves up into New England. This one has it much further north than some of our other models, like I mentioned. There's some freezing rain involved too, so some mixing going on. But really, it closes out quite innocently. And as we take a look at that total snowfall, east of the Rockies, I mean, the maximum we're seeing according to the European model is 6 to maybe 8 inches over the course of the next 10 days. And obviously, our chances of snowfall are diminishing quickly this time of year. So this would be a very, very calm end to the winter with hardly anything going on. Now, let's take a look at that GFS model, which highly disagrees. We're seeing that first snowstorm starting out. We're at about 7 p.m. on Tuesday, March 9th. We see a lot of snowfall there for the Rockies in the upper Midwest by this point. 
Uh, and then by the time we're reaching about maybe 11 a.m. there on Wednesday, March 10th, you can see this one has a much more major solution with that first snowstorm. As we see moderate to heavy snowfall going on for the Dakotas and Minnesota as well, some freezing rain. That's going to be a significant snowstorm in itself. Here's 7 p.m. on Wednesday, and again, just a very uh, major snowstorm going on. And then it closes out by the time we're reaching about 11 a.m. there on Thursday. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at that second snowstorm according to our GFS model in just a moment. Now, this is by the time we're reaching about 7 p.m. there on Friday. Again, take all of this with a huge grain of salt. I wouldn't be surprised if this stuff happens, but I also wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't happen at all either. We're right on the fence here. We can see that there is some snowfall for the four corner states up through portions of the Rockies. We do have some heavier rainfall going on for Texas, Oklahoma. Wouldn't be surprised if we see some severe weather on that eastern end. That's a little bit far out for that. It's easier to talk about snowstorms and low pressure systems uh, in the medium to long range, but severe weather is almost impossible uh, even to figure out beyond five days out. It's very, very tough. Now, let's take this towards about 3 a.m. on Saturday morning on March 13th. And this one has those areas in eastern Colorado up through Nebraska and South Dakota beginning to see some moderate to heavy snowfall here. We're starting to see that flooding rain there for Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri. Very, very heavy rainfall there. Uh, let's move this towards about, I would say this is approximately 3 p.m. there on Saturday, March 13th. And as you can see, we have that heavier snowfall going on for Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa there. Definitely this would be a 10-inch plus event, if not much more there just according to how this looks but again take everything with a grain of salt especially the details because i mean it, it's a possibility that this could happen in general and it's a possibility that it couldn't happen in general the fine details are even lower confidence than the storm happening in general so the fine details we'll take a look at that just in case that is what ends up happening but really don't rely on this looking exactly like this at all uh, that's my advice to you. What we're going to do is we're going to move on towards where this is going to enter into the Great Lakes and eventually into the eastern United States as well as it closes out. And then we'll take a look at the total snowfall according to this model as well. All right, now here we are taking a look at about 1 a.m. there on Sunday, March 14th. And as you can see, we have that heavy snowfall now for Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, even some freezing rain there for some of the northern portions of Indiana. Uh, and Ohio, maybe some snowfall mixing in as well. But again, that's just one of those things that's very fine details. Uh, and, it, and that's certainly going to look different by the time we're reaching that point. Uh, and then by the time we're reaching about 1 p.m. on Sunday, you can see this has moved up into the eastern United States. That's going to be, it could be way further south, way further north. It couldn't, it could not even be there. Uh, there's so many variables with this situation. Uh, the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, the Northeast is seeing heavy snowfall by this point, according to our GFS model. And we would have a decent low pressure system located mostly over northern Virginia there and around D.C. in general. Very, very interesting. And then it eventually moves offshore and becomes a little bit of a Miller Bean or Easter. I would see this as a possibility within this pattern. But again, lower confidence. We do see that moderate to heavy snowfall going on for New York City, northern New Jersey, Long Island, the southern regions of New England. This isn't unheard of this time of year, so... Uh, I'm not saying this is impossible at all. Uh, we have seen snowstorms for similar regions in similar dates in years past. Here's by the time we're reaching about 1 a.m. on Monday, March 15th, as we're closing near the end of the storm. And it would have some snow making its way down into the mid-Atlantic. I guess some colder air makes its way in behind it. Although I do expect us to generally be in a warmer pattern as we reach the middle portion of March. But so many var variables, this could really go in any direction. So here's that total snowfall according to the GFS model, and you can tell that this is much more major than what the European model was showing. Either is possible, anything is possible at this point when you're talking about seven days out plus, but it would be interesting to see a solution like this on the GFS model. Winter would get one last chance to give us some decent snowstorms. You can definitely tell that there's two here. You can see the one for the Dakotas up through Minnesota dropping a ton of snowfall, even uh, areas of 20 inches plus there within that kind of teal shade. Uh, and then we see a lot of those pinks from Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, all the way in through the northeastern United States and Pennsylvania, New York, and surrounding regions. That's where we're at about 10 to 20 inches of snow with the, within that pink region as well with storm number two. So that would be two major snowstorms basically back to back for the early to middle portion of the month of March here. All right, now for our confidence tab, we're at a one out of six, guys. Obviously, I've 
alluded to the fact that our confidence is extremely low, uh, that this is a long range event. We're taking this with a major grain of salt. And I will talk about these things continuously from now till the middle portion of March, if they still look to happen, but there's a very good chance that this just does not pan out at all the way the models are showing it right now. I hope I've made that clear enough throughout this video. I've tried to mention it as many times as possible, but outside of this, there's literally nothing else going on. And if there is, I've touched on it already. So it's, it's a very dry portion in, in the weather, a, t a very dry time period. We have this in the spring and the fall where it gets very quiet uh, and it makes it hard to do my job. I have to find things that are a little bit longer range and lower confidence to talk about because there's nothing else available. I hope you guys are understanding of that. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you want kind of an abrupt transition towards summer just to get, for it to get really hot here in March and April? Or would you rather it be very subtle? And North America said, I would like to see a gradual transition to warmer temperatures with a lot of thunderstorms thrown in between. I love thunderstorms. I don't like, I don't like dangerous thunderstorms, but I do love thunderstorms for sure. And I'm looking forward to many, many thunderstorms. And I'm hoping for the same thing here that North America is hoping for as well. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons. Sebastian Tao, John Benbenek, James Wade, Dovi Nagel, Alan Belemo, Adam S., Larry the Pan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Russell, and Aiden Mattis. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Codalesa, Michael Buell, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's J, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Falego, Garys, and John Qualisi. If you would like to join our patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.